important that we have a forgiving heart. And sometimes stuff you do that you go through all your life, people never realize what you did. The flip side of that coin is some people go all their life never realizing what Christ did for them. And he's done so much more than you and I actually realize. Uh, If you would this morning though, turn with me over in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Um, And this has to do with some of that realization. And last week I had shared with you how Some things are impossible with men, but things are possible with God. I'm going to kind of continue on with that in a different way this morning. As we look at our lives and things that happen and and what we put priority on. and, and Anyways, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let us seek the Lord in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love, your mercy. We thank you for being our Savior. And Lord, as we live our lives, that we realize what's most important. Lord, that you lead us and direct us. Be with those that are lost or hurting and undone. Lord, that you bring them and give them the knowledge to receive you as Savior and and pray that they accept your love. Be with me as your messenger today, and we give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we talk about faith. okay we talk about faith and we talk about trying to please others and um, but for us to please God we must have one thing and without it it's impossible to please him you must have faith in God Jesus (laughs) if you don't have faith you cannot please God You know, people want to please other people and they want things to happen and they want things to be good in their life. It's impossible unless you put your faith in God. And that doesn't sound like much, possibly. But let me give you an example. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They served God. And they did what God asked. And it come down to it was a question of their faith because the king had made a decree and you know the story. They were cast into a fiery furnace. Now, by all means, they should have burned up. By all practical human thought, there's no way to survive that situation. But with God and they had faith in him, they began to do the impossible. Okay? And you say, well, what's the point in that? I'll give you a real up-to-date example. When someone dies, that's it. Do you see them anymore on this earth? No, they're gone. That's not possible that they should live after they die. But through Christ Jesus, just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shouldn't have survived the fiery furnace and all that were around it burnt, even though you and I die through Christ Jesus by faith in him. We can not only please God, but we overcome that situation. It seems so basic and so simple. But folks, that's the way everything in life is. Everything. It's God's design. It's God's purpose. It's God and who he is and how he created us. 
He created us to not only be able to please Him by having faith in Him, but He does the impossible in your lives when you put your faith in Him. You know, as we do anything, you can do, as you do a project, you can do it grudgingly, obligationally, or from your heart. There's entirely different results of the three ways you do those things. If you do it from the heart, it runneth over. If you do it from obligation, you're going through the motion. And if you're doing it grudgingly, you're just forced to do it and you just your heart's not in it. So as it is, whether you sing a song or praise to the Lord, or you give a tithe or an offering, or you spend time with a friend, or like the story, the father went because that's where his heart was. Although they didn't realize it, the father did. Although you don't realize worshiping and taking it for granted, or serving the Lord or living day to day, let your heart be to God. Put your faith in Him. It's a simple thing, but folks, we miss it. And if we get that faith and we please God, God is a rewarder of those that seek Him diligently. God is a rewarder of those who seek Him diligently. So, well, what kind of reward do I get? How much is joy worth? How much is hope worth? How much is eternal life worth? Can't be bought with money. It can't be bought, begged for. It can't be purchased. It's a gift you can only receive by faithfully trusting in God. And he says he's a diligent rewarder of those that seek him. <clears throat> what are you seeking in life? Something busy? What is you, what everything that you do? Why are you doing it? Because that's what I want. That's what I like. Or is that what God's put in your heart? And he give you the talents, the ability, and the skill to do that which you do to share with others. Or not. Some people like to have their talent and they keep it all to themselves. That's not doing what God said. And I know this is a chapter about faith. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. <clears throat> does that describe your life or does it fall way short? You know, we have a lot of things that come and a lot of things that happen and it seems like I don't understand a lot of stuff. But if you let God fill your heart and lead it, It's the best way you can live while you're here on this earth. Acts 26 and 8. He said, Why should it be a thought, a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Well, what's the big deal about why is it should it be so incredible? Why should it be a thought, a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? God, is, God has power over death. And he's able to raise the dead. And, and you think, well, I get that. But folks, without faith, you miss the blessings from God. You see, in the scriptures, it tells of a person called Lazarus. And Lazarus loved the Lord. 
And Jesus was off working somewhere else doing another ministry. And as he was off and there, and Lazarus died. And then as he came, if you read the story, he said, had you been here, he would not have died. He said, but he said, but he's already stinking. You're too late, Jesus. In essence. But you see, with God, nothing's impossible. He raised Lazarus from the dead. In other words, there was no doubt. God did the impossible. God does the impossible. But we must have faith in God to receive the impossible. And as you go through life, there's so many circumstances. From finance to health to heartache to troubles in families to dysfunctional families to loss of all kinds. But folks, we serve a mighty God that does the impossible. He's God. He's not a genie. He's not a miracle worker. He's God. Most people use God for a genie, rub the bottle, ask the Lord, here it comes. Folks, it goes back to the very basic thing I told you. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you put your faith in God, he is a rewarder of those that put their faith in him, that diligently seek him. It's not because you're good. It's not because you're horrible. It's not because you deserve it. It is exactly because what God said. When you put your faith in God, he is a diligent rewarder of those that seek him. Nowhere in that verse did it say, do this. Only one thing you have to do is believe and seek diligently. It's not because you deserved it. It's not because you're better than the next person. It's because you did what God asked you to do. Folks, anything we do, especially when it comes to serving the Lord, and I hear all of you say at one point, I can't speak well. Moses said that. The next one says, I can't sing well. The next one says, I can't do this and I can't do that. Folks, God doesn't want your can't. He wants your heart and your faith. And watch God do the impossible in your life. Whether it's singing, preaching, teaching, or just doing a daily job. God's put it in your heart and seek Him diligently. And watch God do the impossible. And I'm not preaching miracles to you folks. I'm preaching a simple basic message of faith. And what God says about the folks that seek Him. And when you seek Him, He does Reward you that diligently seek him. End of story. We don't want to accept that. Well, you got to do this and you got to do that. Hmm. Folks, where's your heart today? Where is your heart today? And as you go forth from this day, ask yourself where your heart really is. You know, in a trivia game that I saw, If you were to fall in love and you've just fallen in love, what are things you neglect? And the answer is very. You neglect your job, you neglect your money, you neglect your family, you neglect all these things for that love. I want you to, I would like you to fall in love with Jesus. And nothing else will matter. 
as you face each day, you think, well, I want this, and I'd like, and I do that. I get, there's things I want. But if you'll fall deeply in love wholeheartedly with Jesus Christ, nothing else matters. Nothing. So when you do things, do it with the Spirit of Christ within you, filled from the heart, and let God be a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Not for the reward, but for the joy that it brings you in your heart. There's a song we sing, it's sometimes it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Folks, you can't buy that. Only way you get that is by putting your whole heart and letting God lead it and seek Him diligently. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, And you know it, but I want you to... Uh, it's one thing to know it, it's another thing to do it. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, least any man should boast. And I'm going to say that and I'm a, I've said that, but I want you to look at something. If, and as you go through life, and you tell a lie, and you look them in the eye and you tell a lie, who are you most disappointed to when you look them in the eye? And tell them a lie. Some will say my mom. Others will say my spouse. Others will say my boss. And some may say Jesus. But folks, when you look yourself in the eye and you've lied to yourself, there's no greater disappointment than when you lie to yourself. So, be honest with yourself. It's, and as we serve the Lord, it's by grace that you're saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It is a gift of God. And we have no reason to boast on ourselves, but we can boast about Christ. So things that are impossible with people are possible with God. We oftentimes seek a friend when we're hurting. And we seek all different things. But folks, there's no one able to help your heart, to help your situation, or to help your eternity more than Jesus Christ. Put your faith in Him totally. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, or chapter 1, verse 7 through 10. And this was the Apostle Paul. He said, Our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering, so shall you be also the consolation. For we would not burden, we would not, for we would not, brethren, have you be, have you ignorant of our troubles which came in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength and in so much that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but trust in God which raised the dead who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us folks you can trust in all sorts of things and you can go through all sorts of situations God's the only one that will deliver you from death 
the only one. There's no other way to be delivered from death. Then back in Ephesians, sorry to have you flip back and forth, Ephesians 3 and 20. He says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we have asked or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Folks, we don't understand how awesome God is. But you let God do Come into your heart. Trust Him by faith. Fill you with the Spirit. And you seek Him. He'll reward you. In ways you can't imagine. As you go each and every day. And folks, you have today to make that choice. If you wake up tomorrow... You have that choice again. And so on and so forth. Won't you make the most of your life? Instead of waste most of it? Answer in your own heart where God is with you. And I'll close with Psalms 91, verse 5. And Psalms 91 is one of the best psalms I know where God delivers. But in Psalms 91, 5, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Thou, in verse 5, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror of by night, nor by the arrow that flieth by the day. Trust in the Lord. And you don't have to be terrified at night. Don't worry about the arrows of Satan that come against you during the day. God's got you. You say, but I don't understand how God can do that. Thank God we don't have to understand. All we have to do is have faith in Christ Jesus and let him guide us as we take that step each and every day. Let us stand, and as we stand, we'll have a song of invitation. Nothing is impossible with God. And you limit God only by the faith that you don't have in Him. If you put your faith in God, there's not a limit to what God can do in your life, as we say. Number 141. speaking to you today will you listen God's spirit's moving what's he asking your heart to do will you act upon it and put your faith in Jesus Christ as he's calling to you God's giving you an opportunity to put that faith in Him. It's up to you. Do you want the rewards that God offers you by having faith in Him? Now's the time to trust in Him as Lord, as Savior, as God.
thank you all for being here. We'll have our cantata practice immediately after service. It'll go pretty quickly. We have five different scriptures to read, so anybody would like to read in between each of the songs, we need five people. <laughs> All right. Um, Mitch, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer? Our most precious Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this day. Thank Thee for the word that we have just heard, Lord, and just help us to better understand and let you lead us and guide us in the way we need to go, Lord. Just be with us and protect us and bring us back to your house again if it's your will, Lord. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sit there right there.